So these are the component parts, uh, two different types of pegs, two main poles, a brow pole, guy lines yet to be assembled, stuff sack, main pack, instruction manual with this one which makes a change, the tent itself and a pole sleeve repair tube I just spotted. I say I'm too keen on the lightweight pegs to be honest. They're not very finger friendly. They're hard to get in and out. They tend to cut your skin when you're cold or your hands are dry or hard. So I'll probably end up changing these. Solid enough though, they don't seem to bend too easily. There's four very lightweight ones that hold the corners of the tents and then more heavy duty ones for the guiding points. But they could really do with draw cords. So I may well change them for MSR groundhogs or similar. A wee bit quieter undercover anyway, that's good, out the wind. I'm just going to get some soup on and some lunch. Uh, as you can see, a good amount of headroom even at the door end, which is lower, but in the centre it goes up quite a bit. It's actually quite spacious inside. Definitely the advantage of a single skin tent for the weight. We're talking 1.3 kilo. Um, and the amount of space you get, including the vestibule area, is massive. Really comfortable for this weight. For this weight and strength, I should say because they are pretty burly uh, DAC featherlight poles two slightly thicker ones and a slightly narrower brow pole just to brace it and give you a wee bit more head and shoulder room which is good Nice wee view at the door as well and as you can see plenty of room for storage and cooking it runs right along the full length of the tent there It's a good test of the wind up here anyway. Um, a wee bit more flappy, slightly more noisy than a Terra Nova Southern Cross I would say. But it does present a bigger area to the wind, it's higher and it has flatter sides. Um, so you maybe want to take that into account in terms of if you're deciding between the two. I would say the Terra Nova is quieter, but it is low and cramped. guy lines themselves are really burly I don't know what thickness that is but they're very strong good strong attachment points going right around the pole as well and the pole sits externally uh, it's really tight to try and get these in though absolutely very very tight everyone complains about it it's almost like the pole could do with being a couple of miles short For those of you that watched my previous video on the S20 version, the two-man version of this tent, um, you can see that the interior is a PU coated, sorry, a PU coated fabric with a carbon impregnated coating on it, which absorbs water uh, at the molecular state and then allows it to evaporate through the material in due course. It's almost like a two-stage process. 
Um, I won't be testing it today, it's kind of too windy to tell how well it would work. Uh, probably better to try it in still conditions. Um, but so far it's been very good and on a par I would say with an event fabric uh, which is used in the RAB shelters. You can see it's got a very large pocket for one person on the back wall here which is great. The back wall is quite vertical with a guy line at the middle. So it will be prone, depending on the way the wind comes, to acting like a bit of a sail. So you have to be just a wee bit more careful about how you pitch it. Uh, the only other feature inside, because it is very minimalist, is just a little torch hanging loop here and that's it. The height in here is almost high enough to get a gear loft, which would have been a nice idea. But uh, I'll maybe suggest that to, to Crux Lightwave and see what they say. On the inside of the uh, door here is the usual uh, DWR coated inner nylon which will breathe and just keep droplets of water off and then there's a small midge vent uh, running across the top here for ventilation it's actually a lot smaller as you can see probably just about six inches deep at the widest uh, than you get in a Terra Nova Southern Cross so the tent should be warmer I think inside than the Terra Nova which has vents at uh, either end the foot and the head vent I'm sitting about halfway back in the tent, so it's just to give you some idea of just how roomy it is. For a one man it's excellent, and that is, I guess, the key thing about a single skin tent. If you can get the breathability, you end up with a lot more room. What I also like about this uh, tent is the depth of the, the tray ground sheet. It must be a good 6 inches to 8 inches high, which is, should bode well for waterproofing. A wee bit thinner again than the Terra Nova, I don't think it's 10,000 mil hydrostatic, I think this one is 5. I'll check and maybe stick this on the video. Um, so you'd have to be a wee bit more careful about taking care of it. But it feels a nice mix of robustness and lightweightness. The other good thing about one of these tents that opens on the side is you can sleep either way, so foot at that end or feet at that end. Um, although it is biased a wee bit because at this end where the door is, there's an extra guying point which gives you that tiny wee bit more shoulder room. Though, actually, when you look at the ends of it, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, um, it's wide enough to sleep either direction, so you'd have no problem with it at all. To be honest, I haven't pitched it too tidily, it was a wee bit hasty, but um, you'll see the vestibule's got lots of room, the rucksack can sit to the left under cover, you can still cook, I've got shoes etc down to the right here, and there's plenty more space in our couple of feet to the right, so no complaints in terms of being able to cook and uh, store stuff.